get things started, I first bought a six pack of my favorite LED diffuser channels on Amazon. Now if these specific ones aren't available in your country, try finding ones that have at least a 15 millimeter gap between the LED strip and the diffuser material. Once they arrived, I'm going to use my miter saw to cut them in half so you're left with 12 pieces that are exactly the same length. If you don't have access to something like this, you could easily cut them in half using a small hacksaw. So for the LEDs, I'm going to be using some BTF lighting 60 LEDs per meter, 5 volt WS2812B strips. Now I've always had good luck with these and they should work great for this build. Right now I'm just measuring how long my strip of lights needs to be and I'll be cutting it down to length. For reference, there's going to be 30 LEDs per channel. Next I'll be using some 18 gauge silicone wires and cutting 3 pieces off, each at about 6 inches in length. This next tool may be the best purchase I've ever made. It strips the ends off the wires and you don't have to adjust it for different sizes. Now just twist the ends of the wires so that they're tightly bound. Next I'll be tinning the wires, and make sure you have a fan that's going to suck up the fumes from the solder, otherwise you'll probably get a nasty headache. For this step, apply a little bit of solder to the iron and then put it underneath the wire. This is going to help heat things up faster. Once it's hot enough, the solder should begin to just melt into the wires from above. And since the pads on the LED strips are pretty small, you can go ahead and cut the tin wires down to a smaller length. Now it's time to prep the LED strip. I put a little solder on the iron and then press down on the pad. I quickly feed a little solder right on the edge of the pad while hitting the edge of the iron and then lift up. You should be left with a nice little blob and just like most things in life, the more you do something the easier it becomes and soldering is no different. So this is my favorite part where we can begin to attach the wires and I'll be keeping things consistent so red will go on voltage, green on data, and black on ground. All you have to do is put the wire on top of the blob and press down with your hot iron and the wire should melt into the solder that's on the pad. Remove the heat and hold for about one second longer so that the solder has time to set and you should be good. So now that we have one side of the LED strip completely wired, it's time to do the exact same thing on the other side. Now that our one LED strip is completely wired, it's time to remove the back tape and install into the aluminum channel. So honestly, that wasn't too bad and it didn't take super long, which is a good thing because I have to do it 11 more times. Now if this looks familiar, it's because I made it in my last video. Instead of going over again how to make it, just watch the first two minutes of that video where I go over the step-by-step -step instructions. For mounting the LED channels to the pegboard, I'm going to be using the brackets and screws that it came with. Normally you would screw this into the wall, but for the pegboard, I cut some scrap wood into small blocks that I'll be using to secure the brackets in place. I'll be installing the hardware starting on the seventh hole from the left and about halfway down, while leaving a gap of two holes in between each channel. Now it's time to attach the profiles to the brackets. The bottom left is going to be the beginning, so I just need to make sure that the arrows are going up on this first channel and then back down on the second and continuing that pattern until the end. Here you can begin to feed all the wires attached to the LED strips through the holes. Now we can flip the board over and quickly get everything connected. The wires right here are going to be my starting point, so I don't need to do anything with them right now. The first section that we're going to end up connecting is right here, so I'll zoom in closer so you can get a better look. If you haven't already stripped and twisted the wires, make sure to go ahead and do that first. 
So what I'm about to do is connect the wires that are at the top of my first LED channel to the wires that are at the top of my second LED channel. And by far the easiest way I've discovered to connect everything together is to use some Wego connectors. And thank you everyone for recommending these things to me because they really are amazing. So from here it's very easy since I color coded all the wires. Green will go to green, black to black, and red to red. Now I did run out of green wires so that's why you'll also see some yellow ones. Moving down, I'll be connecting the wires from the bottom of the second LED channel to the bottom of the third one. Green to yellow, which is my data, red to red is the voltage, and black to black is the ground. Now you can just continue the pattern until the end. Right here are the wires at the bottom of the last aluminum channel. If you've already stripped the wires, just put a Wago connector on each so they don't accidentally touch. I technically didn't have to put wires on the end, but it's nice to have them if I wanted to add any more sections or if I wanted to inject power at this point. So I flipped things over and I have the wires from my beginning LED strip coming out the bottom. It's now time to connect the controller. There are a few different options available, but this Bluetooth music controller from BTF Lighting has been my favorite. It works great and it's super easy to set up. First, you're gonna take this barrel plug adapter that it comes with and insert it into the plus and minus terminals on the controller. Next just plug the voltage wire into the red dots terminal, data to the green, ground to the black, and then screw them in tight. And if you're wanting to hang this on the wall, the controller is small enough where it'll fit behind the pegboard perfectly. As for power, I'll be using a 5 volt 10 amp adapter that would be plugged into the controller. Next, I'm going to be sliding the diffuser covers onto the aluminum channels. Now once you have the project upright like I do here, you'll probably notice that the diffuser channels will slide down due to gravity. To prevent this from happening, I'm going to gently pinch the bottom of the aluminum channel together with some pliers, which will then keep everything in place. Now it's time to set up the app. With everything plugged in, go ahead and download LED Cord. First, make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on and the app should find the device SP107E. Now go ahead and click on that to connect. At the bottom is where we tell the app what light strips you are using and how many segments and LEDs there will be. WS2812B is not an option, so go ahead and use WS2811. At the bottom, you can see I already have input the 12 total segments with 30 LEDs per section. Now select enter and you're all set. I won't go too in depth with the app, but you have about 30 different matrix type animations, some which you can customize the color of the falling dot, and some you can customize the bars themselves. You also have around 20 other types of sound reactive animations you can choose from by switching from matrix to strip. And finally, you have the regular color mode where you can choose a solid color or you can cycle through one of their 180 non-reactive animations. More than likely you're going to buy this controller for the music aspect, but it's still nice to have those additional options. So I hope you all enjoyed this project and I'll leave you with a few more pictures and videos.